I want to, to show you what uh, the other people participating to the um, ACFests have done with the services. Because this can give you some ideas of what you could do and how the services that we are explaining combine together. Okay? So we said one ACFest, two ACFests in July in Catania with uh, 13 use cases, seven from Africa and uh, six from Europe. And one ACFest in uh, Lagos, Ni Lagos, Nigeria, with uh, 13 use cases, one new, 12 new, and one was uh, an update, an extension of the previous ones. So, um, all the participants to the ACFest, I mean, all that accept to play this role, have been identified as Saigeya champions. So, if you go to the Saigeya website, there is this link to the champions. The champions are the people who participated in the ACFEST and are developing use cases using the services of the Open Science Platform, the services that you have seen so far. So for if you go to this page, you can get, you can uh, see, you can meet all these uh, 32 people, and for any of them, you click on this on the link underneath the picture, and you can get the short profile, the CV, the description of the use case, and uh, what kind of is infrastructure services the use case is exploiting, and the references to the current in the current implementation. And you have this for all the people. So you can meet your friends, you can meet your, these, the Saigeya champions and get information on who they are and the applications they are going on. So I'm going to now going around and show you uh, some of the applications that we are supporting. The first application we are supporting is MIPAR. MIPAR stands for Medical Image Processor and Repository is a repository for brain images, is for medical images. Brain is what we have so far, but they plan to have also lung images, liver images, and so on. So the, prob the, the problem is to create a repository where people can donate medical images and download medical images and run applications, execute codes on medical images. So, this is the portal. The portal uses, uh, uses the open access repository to store the application, and it uses the future gateway to run the, uh, uh, the, uh, the processes on the images. So the first thing that you could do, the portal is federated. So if you go to this page, you can enter with the, your login. So again, with the same credentials on IDP Open, you can access this guy. You can access this portal. So the first thing you could do is donate images. So you can uh, prepare, you can uh, define the type of the image you want to donate, the anatomy, so MRI and brain. And then the image is put on the OIR using the REST API of Invenia, okay? And every image is assigned a DOI, every medical image. So you can make email Im medical images citable and findable. And you can even combine. If you wanna, for example, uh, combine the medical images of a patient in its virtual folder, digital folder. Uh, another thing is download. So you can select the, you can search the open access repository for some ima medical images. You can put the keywords, the metadata, and then you discover that there is at least one image satisfying your research. You search, and then you can download. You can download, and you can view on your local machine with viewers, open source viewers. Um, then you can process images. You can run different kind of processes. 
you can select the image or you can upload your image and then run a process on the cloud using the future gateway. So what will happen is that in this case, you upload and then you call the future gateway API, the same API that you, that you uh, uh, tried yesterday afternoon. Same thing from within, this is PHP. This is a PHP portal. So you can upload or you can search the OIR, choose the, up the, the image you want to analyze, then the image is fetched with the uh, OAR uh, REST API that I showed you this morning and you will test uh, uh, on practicals later on, and you can run the application. And then you, have, um, you can follow all your applications, so you have your job list. When the job is done, you can download the results of the application. And if you download it, you, then you can see on your local machine. And you can play different kind of analysis. That's a useful, that's a, that's a, a usual way of building science gateways. Science gateways that operates on data stored on open access repositories and using the future gate framework to run analysis on the cloud. Uh, during the um, during the Hackfest in Lagos, the uh, MIPAR has been extended. So MIPAR was the one application that we extended in Lagos with the possibility to analyze take the medical image and run some analysis. Compute the volume, compute correlation, perform regressions. And this is done using R. R is a very well-known package, software package, open source package for statistics analysis. So again, you can submit or you can compare data sets. So you can upload data sets or you can choose to take data sets from the OAR. Another completely different application is coming from Kenya, the public health gateway. So what is the, the problem behind? The problem behind is that so Kenya, a, a few years ago, the, the Kenya government changed the rules and people can, do, not, do, not need to have, to need, do not need any more licenses to buy what they call boda bodas, motorbikes. I don't know if they are, I mean, I saw them around in Addis. I don't know how, how do you call them. So there was a, a huge increase in the number of these motorbikes. The, the quality and the, and the size of the, of the roads remained the same. So the net effect was an increase in accidents and casualties. So the idea is to collect data. So when an accident occurs, the people, is brought, people are brought to the hospitals or there are policemen taking data on the side of the accident. So it's data are taken and sent to a central repository. The, central, the data are then analyzed and there is a, 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 a mobile application. People subscribe to the service and they get notified according to the GPS position, they get notified about if they are traveling across uh, uh, black spots, very dangerous areas. So there is a, the, and they are using G library because all the data of accidents are metadata. So they're using G library as a metadata repository to store the data of the accidents. Then there is a real time analysis on distributed computing. And then on the web app, depending on the GPS tracking, people are notified, are notified uh, within the push mode about, uh, about uh, the dangerousness of the streets they are going through. This is the current implementation. The mobile app is available, but it's not yet available on Google Play. People are releasing, I mean, this will be released in the next couple of weeks, but you can see the web interface. So in the web interface, again, you can sign in with the federated credentials, so you can sign in with your credentials. And then you can, this is a map of Nairobi. You can just uh, right click with your mouse here and the possibility to, ins to create, uh, to insert a new accident. And this is the, the data that you recorded in, uh, concerning the accident. The, the model, the model of the, the vehicle, if the, 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 the weather, if this, the, the road was slippery or there was, uh, there was some problems. This very similar problem is trying to be tackled in Uganda. 
Uganda has the same problem and they're running an initiative called One Smile. In Uganda, there is one accident with these motorbikes per hour. And there are just six neurosurgeons in the world, in the, in the world country. This means 10 boda boda deaths per day. And 1,000 casualties per month, only in this small county. So what they want to do? They want to repurpose citizen scientists from bystanders into upstanders. So now people can, can get access to their mobiles and they can call Boda Bodas as ambulances. Or they can notify Boda Boda drivers if they are crossing dangerous areas. So it's an extension of MIPA. This, the, the portal is PHP. And they are using, again, G library to store the metadata and the federated education to allow people in. So what they want to do, they want to get 10 minutes response time. If an accident occurs, they want to have at least one motorbike coming in 10 minutes to save lives. Because Boda Boda can get lots of accidents, but there are so many that they can also be used to transport some people injured to, uh, to, the next, to, to, to the closest possible hospital. And they want to do that running a portal where they want to uh, ad 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 advertise the problem, tell positive stories about this Boda Bodas, and try to create, I mean, try to create good messages and creatives to uh, uh, um, uh, try to convince people about joining this, uh, this uh, team of drivers that could help saving lives. So this is the portal. The portal is not yet public. I mean, the guy is finishing his work, and the, the portal will go online on one of our virtual machine in the next couple of weeks. So that's the portal. You, you have a very good dashboard, so you can control all the status. You can monitor. We can interact. We can go to the accident site. And then you have uh, lots of uh, information. And then you have a uh, mobile app. The mobile app is under development. This is a, a, a web preview. So you have uh, the map. Then you can get uh, the list of black spots. And for each black spot, you can get information about the accident occurring there. So you can see the black spots and also notify people while they are driving about these black spots. And they have uh, clinics. There are places where people can, can be brought to, to be cured in case of accidents. These are storytellers. So people that join is a kind of social network where people can report their good experience with this system. And they also creative spaces, web creative spaces and real creative spaces. Uh, another application, that's uh, that's a, a data repository and informative website on agriculture data. Uh, basically, that's the, the website. And in the website, um, you can, this is some, some information. And then you have all people registered in the website. And you can interact with the, uh, uh, with the the open access repository to upload and download uh, data and documents concerning best practices for farmers, for example. And they are using, yeah, you see there is a form to upload resources and the resources are uploaded on the open access repository. So you have the open access repository behind and you can create your own portal that automatically interacts with the open access repository. So people will not see the open access repository, but they will see your portal, but you will be exploiting all the benefits, DOIs, searchability, and the possibility to connect the data and with the ORCID ID. Okay, another thing, another open access repository, University of Ibadan, Nigeria. They have an open data a repository based on different, I mean, do, do, this was not based on any standard, it was just a database of data sets. So what do, we, what, what do we did? We create uh, categories for this, for this uh, 
project inside our open access repository and they move and they managed to copy all the documents there so every single document was assigned a doi and they could put data sets and papers and reports together they have reports on social sciences as well occupational health and safety survey uh, and, and and different and then you have uh, the the you have the presentation and you have the data set and then using the concept of research packages you can combine them together uh, another thing drug discovery and development platform this is meant to be a science gateway to gather applications for drug discovery interaction with the open access repository but also possibility to integrate scientific applications uh, for like Gromax, for example, or Vino or uh, Autodoc to do this. So again, they are using the open access repository to store their documents and data, and they're using the future gateway to run the applications on their local cluster. That's the portal that is being developed and released. They have information, they have the dashboard, they can add drags and and then they can manage all this data using the open access repository and the future gateway. Yet another application, ASPRD plant repository. This is the agriculture university in Nigeria. They want to create a database of plants, also for health purposes, because uh, uh, they are losing the way of creating medicines out of plants. So they want to create a, a, a data repository. Uh, they they are use they clone MIPAR. So that's a, that, that's a very good that's one of the very important outcomes of these collaborations among champions. They took the MIPAR portal used for medical images, and they basically cloned the project on GitHub, and they are developing it to create instead of medical images, plant images and plant data. And you can see current implementation. So the data are on the open access repository. They are fetching using the, uh, the REST API and they are building this, this page. Basically just uh, uh, showing the um, metadata, rearranging the metadata. And you will see later how to do that. Mario will explain how to interact with the open access repository using the REST API. Yeah, this is the current implementation, all the things, all the plans. Genome-wide association study. Another group from Nigeria wanted to create a database as a collection of tools for uh, DNA studies. So basically what they want to do, they want to um, compare uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms to identify mutations, to identify also the genetic heritage in case in, for some diseases. Genet I mean, genetic transmissions of some diseases. Basically, they want to compare very early DNAs coming from patients from DNA coming from sane people and make comparison to identify some mutations are can come, can, can, can be triggered, can happen. And so to, to calculate some disease specific maps and non disease specific maps. So this is the workflow of the application. They have three phases. And this is what they want to do. They want to create their own portal using HTML5, CSS, JavaScript. But they want to use the Science Gateway and G library to interact with the computing resources and to store data. And if, so this is a more refined, so the web client, the web server, the future gateway to run applications on high performance computing processors and G library to interact with storage, to save data, metadata on storage. So this is the, this is the application, this is the, their portal, you can do lots of things and you can run applications on their own cluster and get back some results. That's the output through the web of uh, 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 the results of a uh, uh, calculation. Uh, Weka. Weka is, is uh, a free software for data analysis and predictive modeling. 
is a data mining uh, framework. Um, Weka is widely used as a desktop application, and hence its performances are limited by the hardware it's, by the hardware it's running on. So the idea is to use Weka to predict to um, to create um, uh, an application to help doctors to identify the emergence of cancer in breast medical image in breast images. This is from Tanzania. So. Weka has been created as an application and integrated in the Africa Grid Science Gateway, which is one of the services. So they, are, they don't have their own science gateway. They are developing a, a, what we call a portlet. And Mario will show you how to do that later on this afternoon. And they integrated this portlet in the Africa Grid Science Gateway. And you can, you, 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 you can use it if you want. So you run. This is a typical workflow. You choose the application, you run. So this is a very nice uh, web interface. You choose the input parameters. Basically, you, you just need to know Weka. You don't need to know how to run the application. You just fill parameters on the web. You choose the classification. You choose what you want. And then you run. You submit. And uh, you can monitor the status. This is the job manager. Your own, each user in the Science Gateway has its own job manager. At the end. When the application is done, you can download it and you can inspect. This is just uh, textual information. They are now working on a uh, um, visualization software. So a software that takes this as an input and creates some visual pattern, patterns for the, for the doctor. Uh, this is agent-based simulation of uh, um, uh, spread of epidemies. I already showed you this morning. These are all the different um, elements to reuse a simulation. DOIs, each, each, uh, each uh, file, each element here as a DOI. Then you have the paper. And then you have, uh, um, all the, you have the model. And you also have the virtual machine where the, all the software is included. And you can run this virtual machine on the cloud. So. Another application in the Africa Great Science Gateway infection model. Again, the usual uh, web form to input data. And then at the output, you have they integrated the, visual, the visualization tool in the Science Gateway. So at the end of the application, the visualization starts, and you can get some visual data, some post analysis. Automatic speech recognition. This comes from South Africa. South Africa has 11 official languages in the country. So translations is a huge problem. So people are trying to create automatic, uh, automatic speech recognition software and translators. So this is the, the layout. And you see here the Future Gateway API. They want to use uh, the open access repository because uh, they want to create a reusable um, uh, archive of uh, um, speech recognitions. And they want to create, so they want to uh, put this in the, as open data and uh, 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 allow people to run control, I mean, to perform controlled runs on these uh, speech recognition files. WRF, WRF stands for Weather Research and Forecasting, is a computing model, is a de facto standard in weather simulations at short time, and climate simulation, long time cl uh, climate simulations. Here, the use case came actually from another project, YME ICT project, involving Uganda, Uganda, uh, Tanzania, South Sudan, uh, Sweden, and Norway to create a network of weather sensors and run weather predictions. They, be, they have huge desertic areas with no weather sensors. So they want to use to, want to create a network of weather sensors and collect data and analyze data to improve the weather simulations, especially for farmers. WARF, uh, we are working with them, and WARF will become another portlet in the Africa Grid Science Gateway. So to get, uh, uh, together with Weka, with the Repast, you can choose WARF and you can run it 
on, they want to run it on their high performance computing cluster at the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology in Tanzania. These are a couple of use cases where the objective is to build informative portals at the beginning and then science gateway. iGrid. iGrid is a project aiming at creating smart grids, smart power grids in Tanzania. So here they want to use, they want to use, they, they manage to use our portal framework and they are building a library of papers, but uh, the papers are actually stored on the open access repository. So the, the open access repository is a kind of backend. People, users who won't see the open access repository, but they will see the portal. And they will be able to search for data and to run. I mean, they, are also, they plan also to include some applications to run some analysis on those data. That's another uh, portal, the Technology Transfer Alliance Collaboration Platform. So the Technology Transfer Alliance is a not for profit network of universities um, aiming at creating uh, project-driven education opportunities to select students from Africa inviting to Europe and running master programs and, uh, I mean, uh, co-tutoring of students between Europe and Africa. and. The collaboration platform is, is, is intended to be a web-based environment containing an integrated set of tools, applications, and data repositories. So this the the portal. And these are some of the applications and projects. These are projects actually run by the students. They select for these joint master programs. Um, open access repository. This actually is something I don't want to spoil Bihailo's presentation, but uh, Bihailo and then Yosef Abate came to Lagos, Nigeria, and the goal was to create a clone of the open access repository for Ethernet. And this is the clone. That's available, a dead address, is integrated with the Federation, so you can, run, you, you can log in on it, and there are already some categories. So you can recognize the look and feel, but now the categories are specific categories for Ethernet and for courses. Okay, so I heard that uh, some of you is interested in making a clone of the open access repository. The clone is there. We, you, 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 you can start from here. We could copy this or you could play with this and uh, ma make all the changes you need to adapt to your need. At the moment, the, this is running on a virtual machine in Catania, but uh, we are discussing with Zalalem the possibility to move on the Ethernet virtualized infrastructure. So Mario can download, can dump the virtual machine, bring here, and restart here under the ethernet.ed.et domain. Platform for MOOCs. We have a platform for MOOCs, and one of the use cases in, in, coming from Ethiopia for, in Lagos was to create a platform for MOOCs. And this has actually been done. Basically, uh, the, our platform, our common, common um, general purpose platform based on Open edX has been cloned, has been adapted, and it runs on another virtual machine in Catania, but this is for, for you. I mean. This was meant to be used for, as a demonstrator of uh, e-learning and massive e-learning uh, platform for Ethiopian universities. And uh, Yosef also managed to include in the platform his own course. So during the, during the, the two weeks of the ACFEST, he managed to created the course, we gave them, I mean, it, it, it got the uh, teacher privileges and he was able to create the course. And you can uh, view the course and you can see on the, all the assignments. So that's already available. You can work on this or you can copy this and adapt to your purposes. So these are elements of the open science platform. G-Library, OAR, 
the uh, open edX platform the forum okay so let me summarize this presentation so we are very much committed to support African open science and make African scientists more visible we are repeating this many times already so the ACFEST is a very effective project driven intensive training mode because you propose the uh, use cases that you want to support and we support you and in two weeks we all work crazy as, uh, to, 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 to reach your, your objectives. So, so far, 19 scientific use cases have been selected by this IGEA project and developed during the Research Act Fest in Catania and in uh, Nigeria. So, 19 use cases of the Act Fest, plus one the repast use case selected in the first year, plus so one smile that we identified during the Ubuntu Net Connect conference last year in uh, Entebbe, Uganda. So we have 21 use cases and 32 champions. And you can see all of them. Now, the good opportunity, I mean, all the 21 scientific use cases successfully exploit at least one of the services of the Open Science Platform. So that's, this is why they are champion. They are using our services and then we are supporting them. And we are, uh, uh, they deserve to be visible. This is why each of them has a web page on our website and we support until the applications are fully running on the infrastructure. So now the good news is that you will be our next champions. We are here to let you become our next champions. But everybody else can, can be a champion. So now we are here for the, for the ACFEST and we are, try, we, are, we, are, we are trying to train you. But then you will get all the training material, you will, know, you, you will get the know-how, you will be able to at least demonstrate your use case so you can act as subsequent trainers. So anybody else in Ethiopia and also in other countries is willing to contact us and we can analyze the use case and it can become, your ship can become a, a, a champion. <coughs> so that's the, the idea. So we are very, we are looking very forward to understanding what you really want to do tomorrow in your presentations. Because so we really want to understand how we can support you in your path to become a champion. And this presentation was meant to give you an idea of uh, what, what I mean, of uh, uh, which, which kind of applications we are already supporting. So try to not to focus on the specific service, but try to to have a look at general problems and try to see how you can organize services like tiles of a puzzle to make a. Uh, to, 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 uh, to tackle a scientific problem. So um, I want to thank you for, for this uh, and I want to invite you, actually, uh, this is, uh, this, I mean, the deadline is very strict, but still, if you are willing to, to undertake this endeavor, we can support you. We are going to run our final user forum and final event in Pretoria, South Africa, in six weeks from now. And uh, the deadline is this Friday. If you, you, if you have clear ideas tomorrow on what you want to do, and this is a very interesting use case, we can support you to write up to four pages, submit by Friday, and we have some participation grants to invite speakers, to invite champions to come over in Pretoria and present their use cases. So that's an opportunity to be rewarded. But of course, so we need to understand exactly what you want to do, how you want to do, what services you want to exploit, and also the societal impact of your use case. <coughs>